In this video, I'll be covering question one, part B from the 2023 AP Calculus AB free response calculator required portion of the exam. I cover parts A, B, C, and D all in their own individual videos. So if you want to see those solutions, please check out my other videos. Okay, so looking at B right now, B is saying, must there exist a value of C in between 60 and 120 such that the derivative value at that point equals zero? This is one of those problems that, you know, the more of these you see, the more times you practice through different free response questions, the more bells and whistles should start going off. Whenever they want to know that there it must exist a value, but they don't care what that value is. Notice they're not asking us to go find that C value on this. They just want to know that for sure that C value exists. And when they want to know that it does exist and it's a derivative value that you're looking at here, 99 times out of 100, this is referring to the mean value theorem. So the mean value theorem, let's see what that says. The mean value theorem says that if you've got a function, if we'll call it f of x is continuous on a closed interval from a to b, that's the first thing it has to be, and it's also if f of x is differentiable on the open interval from a to b so those two things have to be true if that's true then we get to draw this conclusion then there is a value c how convenient right that we're talking about c here there is a value c that is in between a and b that is greater than a and less than b such that the derivative at that point c is equal to and that's this is the key part of the whole thing is equal to the average rate of change the slope between the two endpoints this is like y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1 your slope your average rate of change they say it in about 20 different ways once you get to calculus so what we need to do is, if we're going to say yes or no on this, is determine, can we say for sure that these two things are true? If we can say that, and then we can see that this value here equals what we're looking for, zero, then we can say for sure there is a value f prime of c that would also equal zero. So let's look back and see if we can find out any information about f. They tell us that the rate of flow of gasoline is modeled by a differentiable function f. So we are good to go here. Because they tell us that it's differentiable, if something's differentiable, it had to be continuous. So if they had just told us it was continuous, that wouldn't have been enough. That continuous doesn't mean that it's differentiable. Remember that if something's differentiable, in order to be differentiable, it had to have two properties. It had to be what we say, we call it smooth, which means no sharp corners, no cusps, no vertical tangents, and it had to be continuous. Only things that fit that were cons allowed to be differentiable. And so because it is differentiable, we know for sure these two things are true. And so you would say, because f of x or i guess in this situation would be f of t be careful so f of t is differentiable and then we'd want to tell them on the specific interval that they care about it's differentiable all over the place but specifically we would care about 60 to 120 because f of t is differentiable on the interval 60 to 120 and therefore therefore if I could spell therefore therefore continuous on the closed interval 60 to 120 the mean value theorem applies and so from there once we know we can apply the mean value theorem now we just have to see if the mean value theorem works to equal this so remember, it's f of b minus f of a. So in our little world, the a value is the 60 and the b value is the 120. So we want to know is f of 120 minus f of 60 
all over 120 minus 60, plugging everybody into our average rate of change formula, what does that equal? Well, we can find these values off of our table. So at 120, we have a y value of 0.1. So 0.1 minus, and then at 60, we've got another y value of 0.1. How convenient. And all of that is over 120 minus 60, which is 60. On the top, 0.1 minus 0.1 gives us 0 over 60. And so that equals 0. So we can now say yes. Drawing our conclusion, is it possible that this C value must exist? Yes, there is a C value on that interval 60 to 120 such that F prime of C is equal to F of 120 minus f of 60 all over 120 minus 60 which is equal to what we said zero and again throw a little by the mean value theorem at the end there so the again the the telltale sign on these types of problems is when they're talking to you about must there be this value without actually asking you what the value is and then when they want you to show that the derivative equals something, that's going to be this mean value theorem process. You have to tell them that you're allowed to use it by fulfilling those two requirements and then show them that the conclusion that you're looking for is what those endpoints average rate of change will equal. So this would have been worth two points on the test. You'd have gotten one point for putting together this piece of it here. And then you would have gotten one point for saying yes because of this. The this kind of this one point here by the mean value theorem, you needed to say this piece in order to use it. So it's one big explanation for why you get to use it, but two points total. Thanks for watching my video. If you liked it, please click that like button and subscribe. And also share it with your friends and anyone else you know who might be crying about an upcoming AP Calc test. You can find more videos from me, more sample AP Calc questions, and my complete AP Calc study guide over at my website, apcalcprep.com. Have a great one.